My name's Mike Chisholm, um, I'm a physiotherapist and I've been a physio for nearly 20 years and been in private practice for the last five. I started working in the early days in the National Health Service, which is where most of us sort of do the, uh, the groundwork. Was then fortunate enough to go to London to do a master's degree at University College and then ended up working for three years at the Royal Ballet Company, which was very interesting. Whilst I was there, I also got a part-time work with the Great Britain rowing team and I've now worked with GB rowing for 15 years which has been very interesting. I've worked with the English Institute of Sport for the last eight years. In 2008 went to the Paralympics uh, in Beijing which was uh, really interesting. We picked up two golds and a bronze with the four athletes who went and now I'm here working at the physio studio in my own practice. I worked with Formula One racing uh, in the 2011-12 season when one of the drivers back in this country um, needed treatment when he was off the circuit. That was really interesting seeing what they put their bodies through. I think he was talking about over 4,000 gear changes in Monaco when they're racing and um, you'd find his leg was quite tight from all the braking as well. So that was quite an interesting insight into just what a hostile environment F1 is in the cockpit. I got into physiotherapy 20 years ago when I was training to be a navigator in the RAF. You have to be fit and healthy to be air crew. Uh, so we'd done a PT session, PTI like what we'd done, said, okay boys, you can go and throw the basketball around the gym for 10 minutes and um, I jumped for a ball and landed, my knee bent sideways, big crack, knee inflated like a balloon, and I snapped my cruciate ligament, which uh, subsequently led to me being medically discharged from the service. And I had a lot of physio and um, thought there was a job that I wasn't told about at, uh, at school and had a go. And here I am 20 years later. I found kettlebell fever through a happy um, set of circumstances where one of the patients I was treating had had a hip arthroscopy, he'd then had a torn disc in his lumbar spine and he said to me I've heard of um, Roger and Claire at Kettlebell Fever what do you think and I had a look at the website I said yeah you know they seem as good as anybody else off you go and I'll monitor you um, once a month just to make sure things are going in the right direction after the first couple of months I saw such a change in this patient that I my curiosity was piqued and I said to him look would you mind if I come along and see what you're doing um, you know, I've worked in elite sport, I've seen a lot of good trainers working with athletes and rarely have I seen such a remarkable turnaround in somebody's body. So off I went, watched uh, the patient training with Roger on a Friday evening and immediately saw here was a personal trainer who's just got a real eye for movement and um, I was so impressed I put my money where my mouth was and bought 12 sessions of personal training. And after three months I was moving better, after six months pain in my knee going downstairs wasn't there and I could push it and do things and I was surprised. After nine months, my wife was saying, I've got a new husband, you know, I was starting to lean up a bit, I was putting some muscle back on, uh, and things were generally happy. And 12 months, I'm still working, I have no intention of not going to the gym. With the new insight that I have, having worked with Roger and Claire, I now look at the gym environment very differently. I was always looking at the people in that environment thinking, crikey, you're not really doing that very well. It's not really long before you injure your knee, your back, your neck, your shoulders. And what I like with doing it with training with kettlebell fever is I start to move better and I can take that into my everyday life. I start to stand better, I sit better. I'm just more aware of how I move and, you know, I am feeling fitter and stronger. The last time I went on holiday with the family, we cycle around a lot and um, interestingly it was my heart and lungs that gave out before my legs did uh, and, I, and I said to the wife crikey I can't believe that hill was so easy we have this challenge of cycling up a hill to the campsite and last year it was easy and I'm hoping this year it's gonna be even easier it isn't one size fits all they completely understand your particular problems and then will tailor a training regime and a workout regime to fit your circumstances to fit your goals and to fit what your body is able to do. And I like the fact that for several weeks I wasn't allowed to lift weights until I'd ironed out the kinks in my movement patterning to allow me to start to work. You're not walking in there and looking at, as you are in every other gym, at a bunch of lab rats on treadmills doing the same thing. Um, everybody does different things. So there are some youngsters and some older folk training for the strong first, and there are others that just wanna be better mountain bikers or triathletes. And, you know, it's great, but we all <clears throat> have a common goal of making ourselves better.